Hi guys, this is Joe with Raylax. I've been getting a lot of questions on my live streaming setup, so I wanted to make a quick video on how you can do it for yourself and live stream videos for your family, your team, or your friends. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to download the software. And the software, it's in the App Store. Um, I'll put a link for AirMix Solo um, in the link below. There are three versions of the software. There's actually three different applications that AirMix has. Um, that are relevant. One is called AirMix. AirMix is for your iPad only. It has a bunch of features that the solo version doesn't have, but it's a little bit more complicated and it requires an iPad. Uh, then there's AirMix Solo, which is, is the application we're going to be focusing on. And then there's AirMix Remote. AirMix Remote is a remote application uh, that allows you to use a secondary iPhone or an iPad or even an Android phone um, as a secondary camera. So for instance, if you wanted to um, live stream starting in the middle of the field, you could with the main camera. And then using the remote camera, you could have a view of the goalie. Or you could have each side and be able to switch it back and forth, left or offense and defensive sides to get a better angle. Um, but we'll probably go into that on another video. So for now, let's just assume that we downloaded the correct application and we're going to go into AirMix Solo. AirMix Solo is from Teradek, and Teradek makes a bunch of hardware streaming and s switching devices. Um, but those are mo mainly for bigger productions. Um, I, can't, I actually can't believe this application is free. Okay, so this is the screen that we're going to get into. This is the main screen, and, and it pretty much starts out this way. I'm going to open up an overlay here on the right. And if you notice on the overlay here, um, you have the broadcast controls up on the top. You have the source controls on the left. You have overlay controls on the right. And then you have the source controls for the, the camera down below. So we're going to focus on a few things here, um, starting with the very top left corner. The very top left corner is the configuration corner, and it's, a little it's got little blue gears. We're going to click on that. And then we are going to go over each of these settings. The main one that you're going to have to focus on is Broadcasting Destinations. So if you click on Broadcasting Destinations, you'll see that we have none configured, and we're going to hit Manage Destinations. We are going to add a destination, and there's many things available. We're going to focus primarily with this video on YouTube using RM RTMP. So what we're going to do is we're going to select RTMP, and we are going to place in our address. Um, we're going to cut in really quick to YouTube using the desktop computer where you're going to set up your YouTube channel and your stream. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to describe how to get our stream settings. So I'm going to go into my YouTube channel. You can set this up however you want to. And if you click on your icon on the far right, click on YouTube Studio. When you get into the studio, you are going to hit create and you hit go live. Okay, here's where we're going to edit the settings and the title that we're going to show up on YouTube. So here we hit edit. We're going to put the name of the game. So for instance, Carlsbad versus whatever information we want to put in the description, whether you're going to put the roster, whether you put links to your website, whatever you want to do, you put that in the description. Down here, it'll say streaming software. That's going to be basically saying that AirMix is going to publish to here. The visibility, this is up to you if you want this available. You have three options, private, is they're going to have to log in specific email addresses and you have to send that out and they'll have access to it. Unlisted is anybody you send the link out to will have access 
to the stream. And then public is something that if you want everybody to uh, be able to log into your channel and see it, hit public. Now you can always go back and change it. So let's say you recorded it live stream during the game and you didn't want everyone to see your guys film later. You can hit that as unlisted or private after the event. So in this case, we'll just hit it to public. Restrictions, uh, you can fill out that out. Um, you can fill out the category. You can change the thumbnail. I'm going to use this one. Playlists. If you have multiple playlists, you can put them in there um, and you can add them to that playlist. Otherwise, it'll just show up under live. Uh, for audience, I always put no, it's not meant for kids. It's not that, that there's other restrictions. There's certain laws available with that. I don't even bother with it. Just putting it's not meant for kids. Um, down below, there's options for tags. You can put the tags here that you're interested in. You can fill out the rest of the information. Recording date and time, all of that is not as important. Uh, you can choose the standard YouTube license. You can turn off the comments for your live stream or leave them on. I just leave them on, then you hit save. Inside here are your, the stream settings. The most important one is you have to select a stream key. You'll likely have a default key. If you don't, you just hit create new stream key. It will create a key for you and that you're going to put into AirMix. If you click on this button here, it will give you the stream key, write that down, put that into AirMix under stream. This right here is the URL. Copy this URL right here, and that will be the stream URL. Okay. So we have a couple options here on the left. If we hit manage, this is where Next we can schedule a stream. And we can choose from any of our old settings. streams or create a new one. I'm going to choose one of the older ones and reuse it. Yep, still recording. Basically, everything is good to go for the next time I stream. The only difference here is I have to select when I want this to go live. And so I can select private, unlisted, or public. I'm going to select public, and I'm going to choose the game will be on the first, and I want to make sure that I set the correct time. Okay, so we take the address from YouTube for the stream URL and the stream key and then enter it into the correct spot in AirMix. Now we're, that we're done with the broadcasting destinations, we're going to move over to the encoder settings. Select encoder settings and in it we have multiple options. We have some presets of 1080p all the way to 240 um, and then the last one is manual. I find that the manual is going to be the best solution for most people, but feel free to experiment. In this case, um, with sports, I want to film at 1080p at 60 frames per second. Now, we can't always do that. It's based on the quality of your connection to the internet. Um, so I would definitely recommend taking a speed test during multiple parts of the day to determine your speed that, you're gonna, that your area is capable of. Be pointless to sit there and live stream at 1080p 60 frames per second and you got very little cell service. So when that happens you generally want to download or reduce the resolution, reduce the bitrate so that your viewers will still be able to watch the video albeit at a uh, less less clean or smaller resolution. So the difference between resolution is the uh, resolution is the amount of pixels with the length or with the height and the bitrate is going to refer to the speed and the file size, so the quality of that, of that uh, resolution. YouTube has uh, specific requirements for it. I'm going to put the link with those requirements down below. Um, but here's a quick reference for it. Once you select that, 
you have the audio bit rate and the frame rate. The frame rate we can change from 30 frames per second to 60. Uh, generally speaking, sports 60 is nice. We get uh, no blurring. Uh, but based on your speed, 30 is also definitely good to go. Okay, now that we finished setting the broadcasting destinations and the encoder settings, we're ready to go. So we're going to turn on the camera. Um, if we haven't added the camera yet, you can add a new source, add the camera, and we're going to hit go live. You're going to notice it's going to say publishing to custom RTMP. Once that's live, you'll start seeing um, a countdown or actually a timer up at the very top. And you, When that is going on, it just means that you are actually going live. If you look, there's a couple things to see. One, it has it says live on the top and it says excellent connection. Um, you're going to find this information on your desktop computer in your YouTube studio settings. Okay, right now we are going to add a new source. Basically you have a black screen. What we wanna do is add the camera. So to turn on your iPhone camera, we're gonna hit add a new source. And we're gonna select iOS camera. And you can see on the left side, your camera's there, but it's not the full screen. So we're gonna long press, hold that down where that little color is and we are going to adjust everything in here. There's a few op options for camera settings. Um, right now it's on back camera. You can switch it to selfie camera if you want the front of your phone. Generally speaking, if you're live streaming sports, you probably don't want that. Um, there's an option down below for camera stabilization. I thoroughly recommend you use it. Change that right there. Um, Optical zoom, I would, you can use the optical zoom. You can turn that off if you want no zoom, um, but I have that left on. And then the other thing that I tend to do when I'm out on the field is I hit auto balance, and that's the white balance of the area. So you would just tap auto balance, and it should adjust the, the balance of the temperature and tint. Now we can go ahead and select the camera that we want. And once we do, we can see that the iOS camera is on. You can see the volume going on. It's a little high. And uh, everything's working. Okay, now that we have the camera set up, we're gonna add an overlay. Overlays are pretty easy to add. We can just hold, oops, add, add new overlay. And you have a few options. You can add an image, some custom text, the scoreboard, the title, or just a URL for your users to click on. In this case, we're going to add a scoreboard. So you can see here, as a new scoreboard, you can change the text if you want. And 
you can change the names, you can change the uh, period, and then you can also change the colors. The default colors are red, silver, and yellow. You can see those. You want to make them small, get them out of the way. And once you're ready, hit done. To use them, tap the screen and add whatever overlay you'd like. 